Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Dan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a completely private AI and deploy it on the cloud using N8N as the orchestrator. This is an MVP replication of a very similar setup that actually sold for $35,000, courtesy of username Ecosystems on Reddit. And the best part is you could run this completely for free on your own machine. So before we actually start configuring the system, let's do a high speed overview of the system architecture diagram. The end user's environment just serves as the window to the virtual private server or the VPS. Think of it as your own slice of a data center, a remote computer running 24 seven and quietly draining your cache. First thing any request coming into our VPS has to deal with is a UFW firewall. That's short for uncomplicated firewall, which is a bold claim, but it acts as a bouncer for our VPS. Once a request makes it past the bouncer, it enters the Docker environment. This is where we run our app as a series of independent containers. Each container packages a single service with all its dependencies. Our traffic first meets the Addy Reverse Proxy, who takes all incoming traffic and funnels it to our Streamlit app container, which serves a front-end UI or the pretty face of our application that the end user actually interacts with. Then when you input something on Streamlit, that's the queue for our NADN app container to start running. If you're not familiar with NADN, it's a workflow automation tool that kicks off a precise sequence of events. In our case, NADN activates our Python scripts, which live in our persistent data section. Because unfortunately, a Docker container has a memory of a goldfish. We start it and everything it learned is gone. To fix that, we use volumes to map directories inside the containers of the VPS file system so our precious data doesn't just evaporate. The scripts then talk to the LLM server container. This container has one job and one job only, to run our very free and efficient large language model 5.4. It sits there waiting for a prompt, and when it receives one from our Python script, it does its magic and spits back relevant information based on our docs. Back to the NADN, which passes it back to Streamlit, completing the flow. So let's start building. First of all, we're going to test everything locally on our Mac. So open up your terminal, because we need to install the Xcode command line tools if you don't have them. Type Xcode select install and hit enter. Once that's done, we'll install Homebrew, the Mac package manager. Then brew install CMake. This gives us the tools we need to build software. Next, we'll clone and build llama.cpp. I'm running git clone from the git repo and then cd llama.cpp. And finally, make directory build, cd build, CMake, and then CMake build. This compiles a server program. With our LLM server built, let's set up the project folder. On my desktop, I'll create a new folder called AI Law Firm Project. Inside of it, I'm creating three empty subfolders, docs, models, and rag scripts. Now, here's the important part. We gotta get our LLM. Let's go find a GGUF format AI model from Hugging Face. I'm going to use the 5.4 mini model, which is a great balance of size and power. Let's download it and drag it into our models folder. Next, we need our source document. For our MVP, these would be some AI generated PDFs or text files you want the AI to get information from directly into the docs folder. This allows us to verify that our ingestion script and Docker volume mounts are all working correctly before we move to the cloud. Later, when we deploy our system, we replace this step with a fully automated NADN workflow that watches a Google Drive folder just as we planned. But for now, let's add a few files to the local docs folder so we can test the ingestion flow. Next, we create our code files. First of all, let's create a file for our requirements. Create requirements.txt and paste in the list of Python libraries that you need. Create rag setup.py, query rag.py inside a rag scripts folder and app.py in the main directory. For the code, you can just copy and paste them from the GitHub repo that I linked below. Now it's time to create our Python virtual environment, which is like a separate room for one kid's toys so that you don't get mixed up with another's. It's how you avoid dependency nightmares. Back in the terminal, cd into the AI law firm project directory and run python 3 m vmv vmv. This creates a clean isolated place for our project libraries. Activate it with source vmv bin activate. See how the prompt changes? That means we're in the new virtual environment. Now run pip install requirements.txt and pip install streamlit. This installs all the Python tools our scripts may need. All right, the lab is set up. Now we just need to run it. 
If you remember, this is a multi-part system, so we need a few separate terminal windows. Terminal 1 is for the LLM, so the brain. I'm going to cd to my llama.cpp folder and cd one more time to the build directory and then run cmake dash dash build. Then I'm going to run this command, which is a little bit long, but this starts the AI model and tells it to listen for requests on port 8080. You'll set load the model into memory, so just leave this one running. Terminal 2 is for NADN. For this, we'll use Docker. In your project folder, create a file named Docker file and paste it in the NADN configuration. Now run docker build t my NADN rag image to build a container. Make sure Docker is turned on first, then run the long docker run command from my GitHub repo. This starts NADN. Then inside of NADN, we're going to be using this NADN workflow, which runs ragsetup.py to install and to ingest documents. It'll also run query ragpy when a question is asked through the webhook URL. Because our Python script uses arc parse, the command needs an argument to be passed through after the body of the command itself. Now let's grab the webhook URL from the workflow trigger node and paste it into our app.py. This is a URL that will be used for NADN to talk to our front end. Terminal 3 is for the Streamlit UI, which makes use of the app.py that we just modified. In this terminal, make sure you're in your project folder and your virtual environment is active. Then just run streamlit one appy They'll tell you the local URL to open in your browser. And with that, your proof of concept is live. You can now go to the Streamlit page in your browser, make sure the NADN workflow is live, ask a question, and get a response from your private AI. And now let's take our working project and deploy it to live server on the internet. So now I'm in my DigitalOcean account and I'm going to create a new droplet. And the key choices here are Ubuntu and pick the regular CPU plan, as well as the SSH key for authentication. And we're going to follow the instructions written on the right side here. So I'm just going to go back to my terminal and start copying over the commands. So there I have my key, which now I'm going to copy back to the DigitalOcean text box. And then add that key. Then that should be it. And then now let's click Create Droplet. In a minute, the server is live. I'm just going to copy the IP address and then back to my local terminal. First, I'm going to log in as a root to do the initial setup. To follow best practices, let's create a new user, give it admin privileges. Going through all of these commands in the terminal, which I will include in the GitHub repo, and set up the firewall to only allow web and SSH traffic with UFW. This secures our server. Now I log out and log back in as my new safer user. Next, we install Docker on the server. We're going to run a few commands that I'm going to display on the screen here. And then I'm going to add my user to the Docker group so I don't have to type sudo all the time. You got to remember to log out and then log back in for this change to take effect. Okay, so the server prep is done. It's time to upload our project. In my local Mac terminal, let's navigate to the folder containing our project folder, which in this case is the desktop folder, and use a secure copy command. This copies the entire project folder over the network to our new server. Now I'm logged into my VPS, I'll cd into the AI law firm directory. We need to create the final config files, which are all the Docker files that we need, as well as the caddy file and the Docker Compose YAML. Make sure to edit the caddy file with your actual domain name and point your domain A record to the server's IP. Do this by going to your domain registrar, like Namecheap, and create an A record, set the host to at and the value to your VPS's IP address. One last step is the permissions. The containers need permission to write to our data folders and the commands sudo chmod grants that access. And it all comes down to one final command and that's the docker compose. We're going to tell it to read our docker compose.yammer file and bring our entire multi-container application. So here hit enter. This may take several minutes and you're watching it download the base images, compile llama.cpp inside a container and build all your custom services. Once it's done, that's it. You are live and your app is working on your very own private server. 
or so you might have thought. As you can see from the error, there is one crucial thing that we forgot, which is to configure NADN to run on the VPS. The way to do that is first, we can create a subdomain for NADN by going to our Namecheap dashboard and adding another A record with these settings. This will tell the internet and any requests for nadn.getallofate.com should be sent to our server. And then we'll reconfigure caddy file to route traffic to nadn domain as well. So we'll nano caddy file and add this new block to the file. After this, we can restart caddy to apply this new rule. We also have to update the webhook URL from the NADN into our Streamlit app, because if you remember, it's currently actually using the local host webhook URL. All we're going to do is to update the service name to NADN-app as the host. So instead of localhost, we're going to replace that with this string. So after this, we'll rebuild our Streamlit container and we should see it start working. And as you can see, we are now in the NADN instance and I'm just going to run this workflow once just to make sure we get all that vector store data. And then we're going to go over back to our Streamlit page and then let's type in this question, you know, just as a little demo. I'm going to press submit and then there we go. That gives us the answer based on the ingested documents. Hey, thank you for watching. If you noticed my change of clothes, you know that it took me a really, really long time to make that video. If you could leave a like, a comment, or maybe even subscribe, I don't know, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one.